Well, hello! It's Monday night, and it's me, your trivia host, AJ, for this week. It is our Monday Night Geeks Who Drink Twitch stream. How is everybody doing? Did everybody have a great weekend? <laughs> Don Rico Suave, what are the odds of me being here again? Uh, pretty good, pretty good, because I tend to cover for people when they aren't able to host, as well as host my usual, like, one week a month. Or produce, so, I mean, I'm around a lot. How's everybody? Did you guys have good weekends? Did you guys have a good time? Everybody enjoy the 4th as much as we can with the way everything is nowadays. I hope everybody did. I hope everybody's dogs weren't too horribly affected by all of the noise and fireworks and, you know, all the people who decide to run them through the entire weekend instead of only on the holiday. Um, uh, cool. So, uh, I see a lot of regular names out there. I see Gabo, I see Don Rico Suave, I see Savaz, I see the Jewish Viking, I see all of the regular people, except maybe Jerry. I'm sure Metal Yoga Head is around, or will be around later. Cool. So, we're gonna do our usual seven rounds of Geeks Who Drink on Monday night. All seven of our rounds are gonna be eight questions each. Hey, Stella Rellamelon! Where was I? All seven of our rounds are eight questions each, but all seven of our rounds are not going to be worth eight points. In fact, three of our rounds tonight are going to be worth a 16 possible points. Specifically, those rounds are going to be round two, round six, and round seven. Round two, round six, and round seven are all going to be worth 16 points. All of the other rounds are worth eight. That comes into play when you decide how you want to use your one and only joker no matter what everybody tells you in the chat you only have one joker that you can use in the entire quiz when you use that joker it'll double the points that you earn for a single round now you can use your joker on an eight point round and that's cool oh get you 16 possible points or you can use your joker on a 16 point round and get a possible 32 points that's almost always the difference between the teams in the lead and the teams who are not but I'm not your real dad. Make your own best life decisions and joker the round that you feel the best about. For the quiz itself, we only have a couple of rules. Rule number one should be the obvious one, and that is no cheating. I want you guys to know all the answers in your heads or rely on your teammates for the stuff that you don't know. What we don't want you to do is pop up a Google tab or Ask Jeeves or Yahoo Search, anything like that, and look up the answers to questions while they're being asked. That's cheating, and why are you going to cheat at a free online pub quiz? Why? That feels like way too much work instead of enjoyment for the trivia. But, don't cheat. Oh, I love you too, Don Rico Suave. And yeah, Rihanna is pretty much the only acceptable wrong answer that you can put in chat. And it's more amusing to me if the round two answer is Rihanna, and you guys do that and don't realize that you're right. Anyway... Why don't we get right into the quiz proper and jump into round number one. Round number one is an eight point round. Our theme for round one is, oh, the contributions to humanity. Oh, the contributions to humanity. Happy 186th birthday to Ferdinand von Zeppelin, namesake of everyone's favorite disaster-prone airships. In his honor, here's a round on other inventions named for their inventors, and as usual, we'll accept just the last names for people. Happy 186th birthday to Ferdinand von Zeppelin, namesake of everyone's favorite disaster-prone airship. And in his honor, here's a round on other inventions named for their inventors. And as usual, we'll really accept last names for people. It's fine. The only time that we don't accept a last name is if I specifically tell you that I want the full name. Round one, question number one. Blind from the age of five, what Frenchman was honored with a Google Doodle that spelled out Google in a series of dots? Blind from the age of five, what Frenchman was honored with a Google Doodle that spelled out Google in a series of dots. Ferdinand Boeing von Zeppelin. Oh, but Zeppelins crash. They don't just have random pieces fall off them.
Moving on, round one, number two. Question number two. Named for John Philip Sousa, the sousaphone is basically an easy-to-carry version of what four-letter brass boomer? Named for John Philip Sousa, the sousaphone is basically an easier-to-carry version of what four-letter brass boomer? Four-letter brass boomer, name of my father's autobiography. Question number three. Number three, brothers Giocondo, Frank, Raquela, Candido, Joseph, Grilindo, and Valerino, Valeriano, slap their last name on what company that's now synonymous with hot tubs? Brothers Giocondo, Frank, Riquella, Candito, Joseph, Genlindo, and Valeriano slapped their last names on what company that's now synonymous with hot tubs? Oh, that's a good typo. That makes me wonder what I should add to CloudBot for just score she. I'll have to think about that and come up with something to add. Question number four. Number four, Texas matri maitre d Ignacio Anaya invented what Tex-Mex staple at the Victory Club after some customers showed up late and he had to whip up a quick and cheesy snack. Texas maitre d' Ignacio Anaya invented what Tex-Mex staple at the Victory Club after some customers showed up late and he had to whip up a quick and cheesy snack. No, I don't think there is anything for the final round, but that's yet another one that we should probably add. I'll bug the Jewish Viking to make a couple of changes to CloudBot, and we'll see what funny thing we can come up with to add to those. And uh, yeah, moving on. Number five. Number five, revolutionizing hipster barn weddings. What tinsmith patented his screw-top glass jars all the way back? in 1858. <laughs> round eight is the real final round. Revolutionizing hipster barn weddings, what tinsmith patented his screw top glass jars all the way back in 1858. Round one, question number six. Number six, though later made in Britain, it was actually a German physician named Klaus who created what punky yellow stitched boots. Though later made in Britain, it was actually a German physician named Klaus who created what punky yellow stitched boots. I didn't get married in a barn, it was new construction made to look like a barn, and the exterior was reclaimed barn wood. So it was a hipster barn, Gabo. You got you got married in a hipster barn is what you're telling us. Second to last question of the first round, number seven. 
Question number seven, I hope you're wearing earplugs since bars often get to unhealthy levels of sound as measured by what unit named for a telephone inventor? Hope you're wearing earplugs since bars often get to unhealthy levels of sound as measured by what unit named for a telephone inventor? Hipster barn at an apple orchard. Is it a... Uh, pumpkin farm in the off season with maybe like a corn maze built into it too farmhouse chic No corn maze at all. That feels almost sacrilegious, but at least they do have pumpkins in the fall. Final question of the first round. I have a bonus coming up after this. Number eight, a man of overlapping talents. What British academic is commemorated in this stained glass window that depicts one of his famous diagrams? A man of overlapping talents. What British academic is commemorated in this stained glass window that depicts one of his famous diagrams? All right, that is the end of round number one. That means it's time for our first bonus question of the evening. Bonus question. Beloved in Lithuania, Sepuliani dumplings are named after zeppelins and made from what starchy tubers that kind of look like brown blimps if you squint. Beloved in Lithuania, Sepulani uh, dumplings are named after zeppelins and made from what starchy tubers that kind of look like brown blimps if you squint. I think you guys got the answers for this figured out, so why don't we go ahead and get into the answers for round number one. Round number one, well, that's the round we just read. Blind from the age of five, what Frenchman was honored with a Google Doodle that spelled out Google in a series of darts? That's Louis Braille. Number two, named for John Philip Sousa, the Sousa phone is basically an easier to carry version of the tuba. Number three, brothers Giacondo, Frank, Frank, Raquela, Candito, Joseph, Genlindo, and Valeriano slapped their last name on what company? That's now synonymous with hot tubs. That'd be Jacuzzi. Number four, Texas maitre d' Ignacio Anaya invented what Tex-Mex staple at the Victory Club? Well, that's nachos. Nachos, and now I'm hungry. Question number five, revolutionizing hipster barn weddings. What Tin Smith patented his screw top glass jars all the way back in 1858? That is John Landis Mason. Number six, though, later made in Britain, it was actually, hold on, it was actually a German physician named Klaus who created Doc Martens. 
And number seven, I hope you're wearing earplugs since bars often get to unhealthy levels of sound is measured by decibels. Decibels. And question number eight. Number eight, a man of overlapping talents. What British academic is commemorated in the stained glass window that depicts one of his famous diagrams? It's John Venn. John Venn. And we are back to the bonus question answer. Bonus question was, beloved in Lithuania, Sepaline. Sepaline. Dumplings are named after zeppelins and made from what starchy tubers that kind of look like brown blimps if you quint if you squint Those are potatoes potatoes boil them mash them stick them in a stew Potatoes round number two is the first 16 point round of the evening. It's also going to be a music round round number two our theme is I can see your halo infinite I can see your Halo Infinite. Now it's National Video Game Day, so this round is full of songs that reference them in their lyrics. Just name the song titles and the artist as usual. It's gonna be one point for song title, one point for artist. If you only know one, but not the other, still put it down, because you get a point for that. If you really like your answers for round two, you might wanna use your Joker. I'm gonna play all eight audio clips for you twice. Let's hit it. Now think about I've it. I've been to London, I've yeah. been to Paris, yeah. even where they're in Tokyo. Tokyo. Back home down in Georgia, yeah. to New Orleans, yeah. but you always did the show. Did the show. And just like that girl, you got me froze. Got me froze. Like a Nintendo 64. 64. If you never knew, well, now you know. No, 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 no. We play our fantasies out in real life ways. No fun, no fun. Of a fact, we're real life made for each other, and it's hard to keep my cool when I 
Now think about I've it. I've been to London, I've yeah. been to Paris, yeah. even way up there in Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Back home down in Georgia, yeah. to New Orleans, yeah. but you always did the show. Did the show. And just like that girl, you got me froze. Got me froze. Like a Nintendo 64. 64. If you never knew, well, now you know. No, 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 no. We play our fantasies out in real life ways. No fun, no fun. I'm an alligator I'm a mama papa coming for you I'm a space invader I'll be a rock and rolling for you Keep your mouth shut You're smoking like a big monkey bird Time Splitters 2 was so good, the Jewish Viking uh, and yeah, it, it's pretty great, Gabo, that you got left a in 64 and a copy of GoldenEye, because GoldenEye was probably one of the best games on the Nintendo 64. I was also a big fan of Duke Nukem 64. All right, we are back. Why don't we go over some answers for round number two? Round number two is the audio round we just did. I can see your Halo Infinite. Let's get into the answers. Number one, that's Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter. Number two, that is Humble by Kendrick Lamar. Number three, that's I Like It. By Cardi B, Bad Bunny, and J Balvin. 
Number four. Let us jump around the House of Pain. Number five. That is Honky Tonk Padonka Donk by Trace Adkins. Number six. That's Nothing on You by B.O.B. featuring Bruno Mars. Number seven. That's Streets by Doja Cat. And number eight. That is Moonage Daydream by David Bowie. And yes, we are aware the song predates Space Invaders. Just at Geeks Who Drink on Twitter or something. I don't know. All right, that is the end of our answers for round number two. So why don't we go ahead and move on? And get into round three. Round number three is another eight point round. If you didn't use your Joker earlier, probably save it for round six or seven. That's a good plan. Our theme for round three tonight is Food, Travel, Culture, America Edition. Food, Travel, Culture, America Edition. Every question in this round lists a signature food, a tourist attraction, and a film or TV series that is set there. You just tell me each U.S. city. Every question in this round lists a signature food, a tourist attraction, and a film or TV show that is set there. You just name each U.S. city. Round three, number one. Bourbon Pecan Pie, World of Coca-Cola Museum and Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Number one again, Bourbon Pecan Pie, World of Coca-Cola Museum and... Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Just tell us the U.S. city. Gabo, I legit had the same thought considering the art in the round two video. I half expected everything to be ocarina covers as well. All right, let's move on for round three. Number two. Number two, Fish Tacos, Balboa Park, and Anchorman. Fish Tacos, Balboa Park, and Anchorman. Round three, question number three. Number three, Stone Crabs, Little Havana, Walking Tours, Little Havana Walking Tours, and Dexter. Stone Crabs, Little Havana Walking Tours, and Dexter. Not to be confused with Dexter's Lab. Uh, isn't one just a sequel to the other? I always assumed. Moving on, number four. Number four, Pierogi Pizza, the Carnegie Science Center, and a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Pierogi Pizza, the Carnegie Science Center, and a beautiful day in the neighborhood.
Do you see that they're doing a Dexter prequel uh, sometime soon with, you know, Dexter in like high school and Harry teaching him everything, but apparently Harry's going to be played by Christian Slater, which yeah, that's cool. I actually dig that. But God, Showtime is going to just milk that property as much as they can. Moving on to number five. Number five, Hot Brown Sandwiches, The Muhammad Ali Center, and Call Me Cat. Hot Brown Sandwiches, The Muhammad Ali Center, and Call Me Cat. Just tell us the U.S. city. Yeah, exactly like Young Sheldon, except the Dexter prequel might actually be worth watching. Moving on, number six. Round three, number six. Sonner and Hot Dogs, Kayaking on the Salt River, and Bad Santa. Sonner and Hot Dogs, Kayaking on the Salt River, and Bad Santa. And second to last question of round three, it's number seven. Number seven, deep fried cheese curds. The Pabst Mansion and Happy Days. Deep fried cheese curds, the Pabst Mansion and Happy Days. All right, final question of round three, number eight. Number eight, frozen margaritas. The sixth floor museum at Dealey Plaza and Queen of the South. Frozen margaritas. The sixth floor museum at Dealey Plaza and Queen of the South. All right, that is the end of round three. That means it's time for our next bonus question. All right, our bonus question for round three, continuing the theme, Square Pizza, the Motown Museum, RoboCop. Square Pizza, the Motown Museum, RoboCop. I think you guys got that answer figured out. Why don't we go ahead and go over the answers for round three, Food, Travel, Culture, America edition. Round three, number one. <coughs> Bourbon Pecan Pie, World of Coca-Cola Museum, and Tyler Perry's House of Pain. Well, that's Atlanta, Georgia. 
Number two, Fish Tacos, Balboa Park, Anchorman, that's San Diego, California. Number three, Stone Crabs, Little Havana Walking Tours, and Dexter, well, that's Miami, Florida. Number four, Pierogi Pizza, the Carnegie Science Center, and a beautiful day in the neighborhood, well, that's Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Number five, Hot Brown Sandwiches. The Muhammad Ali Center. And Call Me Cat, well, that's Louisville, Kentucky. Number six, Sonoran Hot Dogs. Kayaking on the Salt River and Bad Santa, well, that's Phoenix, Arizona. Number seven, Deep Fried Cheese Curds, the Pabst Mansion and Happy Days, well, that's Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And number eight, Frozen Margaritas, the Sixth Floor Museum at Dealey Plaza, and Queen of the South, that's Dallas, Texas. And we are back to the bonus question and answer. Square Pizzas, the Motown Museum, and Robocop, well, that's Detroit, Michigan. Round number four tonight is going to be Laissez Ferret. Laissez Ferret. It is a round on the many pets owned by our 30th president, Calvin Coolidge. A round on the many pets owned by our 30th president, Calvin Coolidge. Round four, number one. First Lady Grace Coolidge adopted a raccoon and named her Rebecca after a constituent sent the animal as a potential entree for what fall holiday? First Lady Grace Coolidge adopted a raccoon and named her Rebecca after a constituent sent an animal as a potential entree for what fall holiday? Moving on, round four, number dos. Despite having no idea what it was, the Coolidge's accepted a wallaby from an American living in what faraway land? Despite having no idea what it was, the Coolidge's accepted a wallaby from an American living in what faraway land? Round four, number three, third question, fourth round, found on the Tennessee side. Smokey the Bobcat was a native of what hazy mountain range that's now home to Dollywood? Found on the Tennessee side, Smokey the Bobcat was a native of what hazy mountain range that's now home to Dollywood? You know, I looked up Johnny Loves Chachi after the Happy Days question because I was trying to figure out if Johnny Loves Chachi was also set in Milwaukee. Um, I still don't know because I haven't read the entire Wikipedia article yet, but I forgot Mork and Mindy was also a Happy Days spinoff. I loved Mork and Mindy, but wow, I always forget that that's a spinoff of Happy Days. Moving on, question number four. Number four, Prudence Prim was the family's favorite dog, named for a comic strip about a woman 
who wore the bob curlers and beads of what rebellious 1920s subculture. Prudence Prim was the family's favorite dog, named for a comic strip about a woman who wore the bob curlers and beads of what rebellious 1920s subculture. Is there a 2020 subculture, Gabo? I feel that there's not anymore. Moving on, round four, number five. Number five, meanwhile, Coolidge's Collie was named after what Wild West woman who rolled with Bill Hickok on Deadwood? Meanwhile, Coolidge's Collie was named after what Wild West woman who rolled with Bill Hickok on Deadwood? Were juggalos around in the 20s and the 1920s? Yes, yes, they were. And round four, number six. Number six, Silent Cal may have been the first Ryan Murphy fan. His two pet canaries had what names reminiscent of an aughts plastic surgery show? Silent Cal may have been the first Ryan Murphy fan. His two pet canaries had what names reminiscent of an aughts plastic surgery show? Savaz, I assumed the 1920s was the question as to whether or not Juggalos were around. Juggalos are immortal. They've been here forever. They've lived in the background like the vampires and the Highlanders. Second to last question of round four, it's number seven. Number seven, Coolidge received a pygmy hippo from the rubber plantation of Harvey something. The founder of what tire company that's now owned by the not related Bridgestone? Coolidge received a pygmy hippo from the rubber plantation of Harvey something, the founder of what tire company that's now owned by the not related Bridgestone. Well, I think the problem Gabo is that magnets worked one way uh, before the poles shifted like a thousand years ago and the juggalos have been confused ever since. Final question of round four. Number eight, Coolidge kept his twin lions, tax reduction and budget bureau at the exact same weight and a nod to the policies of what political party that he represented. Coolidge kept his Twin Lions Tax Reduction and Budget Bureau at the exact same weight and a nod to the policies of what political party he represented. Our bonus question for round four is, instead of hiring Atticus Finch to defend her, Grace Coolidge chose to give up what sweet singing bird that's illegal to own in DC. 
Instead of hiring Attis Atticus Finch to defend her, Grace Coolidge chose to give up what sweet singing bird that's illegal to own in D.C. I think you guys got that bonus figured out. Why don't we go ahead and move on and go over some answers for round number four. Round number four was all about Calvin Coolidge and his many, 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 many pets. Number one, First Lady Grace Coolidge adopted a raccoon, named her Rebecca after a constituent sent the animal as a potential entree for Thanksgiving. Things would have been very different if they rolled with that. Number two, despite having no idea what it was, the Coolidge's accepted a wallaby from an American living in Australia. Number three, found on the Tennessee side, Smokey the Bobcat was a native of the Great Smoky Mountains. Number four, Prudence Prim was the family's favorite dog, named for a comic strip about a woman who wore the bob curlers and beads of the flappers in the 1920s. Number five, meanwhile, Coolidge's Collie was named after what Wild West woman who rolled with Bill Hickok on Deadwood? That's Calamity Jane. Number six, Silent Cow may have been the first Ryan Murphy fan as two pet canaries had what names reminiscent of an Ott's plastic surgery show? Nip and Tuck. And number seven, Coolidge received a pygmy hippo from the rubber plantation of Harvey something. The founder of what tire company that's now owned by the not-related Bridgestone? The Firestone. Harvey Firestone. And our final question, number eight. Number eight, Coolidge kept his twin lions, tax reduction, and budget bureau at the exact same weight and a nod to the policies of what political party? It's the Republicans. The Republicans. And our bonus question answer... Instead of hiring Atticus Fitch to defend her, Grace Coolidge chose to give up what sweet singing bird that's illegal to own in D.C.? That's a mockingbird. A mockingbird. All right, round five is another eight-point round. If you still have a joker, don't forget round six and seven are our final 16-point rounds tonight. Our theme for round five is picture and picture and picture and picture and picture and picture. And just name each movie that's watching another movie that's watching another movie and so on. Uh, and don't worry, you don't have to name them all in any particular order. Picture and picture and picture and picture and picture. Just name each movie that's watching another movie that's watching another movie and so on. And don't worry, you don't have to name them all in any particular order. All right, I'm going to run this thing twice for you. Let's get started now. And no, we don't want the answers, we want the actual video. Picture and picture and picture and picture. Oh snap. Oh wow, that vest is a choice. I wish I had hair like that. I wish I had hair, period. You did go bald at a young age. Is this high school, like, in real life? Yeah, you go to high school, you can just hijack a parade whenever you want. Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah, I'm totally not jealous at all. Oh, wait. Hey, which one is, uh... Okay. I got trouble! Ah! Pass this, pass this part. In fact, never play this again. Wait, what's this? Try here, stop. And I seem to find the happiness when we're on. 
what the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? I do not want to see that. I do not want to see it. That's better. I hope it's a funny one. I hope it's violent. Didn't show our ass. Stop moping, Leo. Let's go. Fine. Wait up. Oh, snap. Oh, wow. That vest is a choice. I wish I had hair like that. I wish I had hair, period. You did go bald at a young age. Is this high school, like, in real life? Yeah, you go to high school, you can just hijack a parade whenever you want. Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah, I'm totally not jealous at all. Oh, wait. Yeah, which one is, uh... Okay. I got trouble! Pass this, pass this part. In fact, never play this again. Wait, what's this? Try here, stop. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? I do not want to see that. I do not want to see it. That's better. That's better. I hope it's a funny one. I hope it's violent. Didn't it show our ass? Stop moping, Leo. Let's go. Fine. Wait up. Oh, snap. Oh, wow. That vest is a choice. Huh? I wish I had hair like that. I wish I had hair, period. You did go bald at a young age. Is this high school, like, in real life? Yeah, you go to high school, you can just hijack a parade whenever you want. Yeah, can you imagine that? Yeah, I'm totally not jealous at all. Oh, wait. Yeah, which one is, uh... Okay. I got trouble! Pass this, pass this part. In fact, never play this again. Wait, what's this? Try here, stop. What the hell am I looking at? When does this happen in the movie? I do not want to see that. I do not want to see it. That's better. That's better. I hope it's a funny one. I hope it's violent. Didn't it show our ass? Stop moping, Leo. Let's go. All right, that is the end of round five. I love that round. That round is fabulous. Number one, that's Teenage Mutant like Ninja it. Turtles, Mutant Mayhem. Number two, the Lego Batman movie. Number three is Step Brothers. For the Flintstones. V for Vendetta, n number five. And come on, you knew, you knew Spaceballs was gonna be a part of this when you caught the conceit of the round, right? Spaceballs number six. Green Mile is number seven. And the final clip is 
The Shape of Water. All right, that was the end of round five. So why don't we go ahead and get into round number six. Round number six, it all starts with you. It all starts with you. It is our second 16-point round of the evening. Our theme for round six, this is a round of two-part questions, and all answers start with the letter U. It's one point per correct answer. It's a round of two-part questions, and all answers start with the letter U. One point per correct answer. Number one, first part, when Travis Kalani... I don't know why I just stumbled over that. When Travis Kalanick couldn't get a taxi in Paris in 2008, he founded what app? And for a second point, what company originated in the 1900s with two teens making package deliveries by bike? Number one again, when Travis Kalanick couldn't get a taxi in Paris in 08, he founded what app? And for a second point, what company originated in the 1900s with two teens making package deliveries by bike? Moving on, round six, number two. Number two, first part, America Ferrera wore prosthetic braces to play the title character on what 2000 sitcom? And for a second point, Ellie Kemper wore light-up sneakers in JCPenney clothes to play the title character on what Netflix show? Number two again, America Ferrera wore prosthetic braces to play the title character on what 2000 sitcom? And for a second point, Ellie Kemper wore light-up sneakers and J.C. Penny clothes to play the title character on what Netflix show? Round six, number three. Number three, first part, the first rap song nominated for a Record of the Year Grammy was What MC Hammer Jam. And for a second point, Fall Out Boy had a hit in 2015 with a song named after What Mom of Maya Hawk. The first rap song nominated for a Record of the Year Grammy was What MC Hammer Jam. And for a second point, Fall Out Boy had a hit in 2015 with a song named after What Mom of Maya Hawk.
Round six, number four. Number four, in the 19th century, the Bible was the only book to outsell what Harriet Beecher Stowe novel. And for a second point, in the 16th century, Thomas More wrote what idealistic book whose name literally means no place. Number four again, in the 19th century, the Bible was the only book to outsell what Harriet Beecher Stowe novel. And for a second point, in the 16th century, Thomas More wrote what idealistic book whose name literally means no place. Moving on, round six, number five. Number five, if you're creeped out by a video game character that looks almost human, that's what two-word term? And for a second point, Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia are among the hits made by what French video game company? Number five, again, if you're creeped out by a video game character that looks almost human, that's what two-word term? And for a second point, Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia are among the hits made by what French video game company? Six, question number six. Number six, first part of the sushi bar, sea eel, is a nago, and freshwater eel is what? And for a second point, what Filipino yam is a trendy ingredient in cookies and lattes for its bright purple color? Number six again, first part at a sushi bar, sea eel is a nago, and freshwater eel is what? And for a second point, what Filipino yam is a trendy ingredient in cookies and lattes for its bright purple color? And second to last question of round six, number seven. Number seven, first part, the Book of Mormon is mostly set in what landlocked country? And for a second point, what's the largest double landlocked country, meaning that all of its neighbors are landlocked too? Number seven, the Book of Mormon is mostly set in what landlocked country? And for a second point, what's the largest double landlocked country, meaning that all of its neighbors are landlocked too? And final question of the round, number eight. Number eight, first part. I have just met you and I love you is a meme-worthy line from what 2009 Pixar film? And for a second point, tell me you did not just reference Home Alone is a kind of meta line from what 2019 Jordan Peele film? Number eight, one more time. First part, I have just met you and I love you 
is a meme-worthy line from what 09 Pixar film? And for a second point, tell me you did not just reference Home Alone as a kind of meta line from what 2019 Jordan Peele film. All right, our bonus question for round six. The block U is a giant concrete U set in one of the Wasatch Mountains at the University of what out west state? The block U is a giant concrete U set in one of the uh, Wasatch Mountains at the University of what out west state? Okay, I think you guys got that. Okay, they're done barking, maybe. Or at least went to the door. <laughs> I think you guys have that bonus all figured out, so why don't we go ahead and go over some answers for round number six. Number one, when Travis Kalanick couldn't get a taxi in Paris in 08, he founded Uber. And for a second point, what company originated in the 1900s with two teens making package deliveries by bike? What's UPS? Number two, America Ferrera wore prosthetic braces to play Ugly Betty. And for a second point, Ellie Kemper wore light-up sneakers and JCPenney to play the unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. Number three, the first rap song nominated for a Record of the Year Grammy was You Can't Touch This by MC Hammer. And for a second point, Fall Out Boy had a hit in 2015 with a song named after Uma Thurman. Number four, first part in the 19th century, the Bible is the only book to outsell Uncle Tom's Cabin. For a second point, in the 16th century, Thomas More wrote what idealistic book? That's Utopia. Number five, if you're creeped out by a video game character that looks almost human, well, that's an uncanny valley. And Assassin's Creed and Prince of Persia are among the hits made by Ubisoft. Number six, at a sushi bar, sea eel is a nago and freshwater eel is unagi. For a second point, what Filipino yam is a trendy ingredient in cookies and lattes for its bright uh, purple color? Well, that is ube. Ube. Number seven, first part, the Book of Mormon is mostly said in what landlocked country? Well, that's Uganda. And for a second point, the largest double landlocked country, meaning all of its neighbors are landlocked too? Well, that's Uzbekistan. 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 And question number eight. I have just met you and I love you is a meme-worthy line from Up. And for a second point, tell me you did not just reference Home Alone as a kind of meta line from Jordan Peele's Us. All right, time for our bonus question answer. Our bonus question, the block U is a giant concrete U set in one of the Wasatch Mountains at the University of Utah. University of Utah. It is the final round. All right, 
it is our final round of the evening. It's another 16-point round. If you still have a joker, well, you kind of have to use it now because it's the end of the quiz and you're not allowed to take them home and bring them back next week. Random knowledge is 16 possible points. Some of the questions in this round are going to have multiple parts. Some are going to be worth multiple points. Make sure you pay close attention to each question. Number one is worth one point. One point, the, the oil world's bubbling with the news that ConocoPhillips plans to acquire what big-ass petrol company that's kept cars running for way more than 26.2 miles. The oil world's bubbling with the news that ConocoPhillips plans to acquire what big-ass petrol company that's kept cars running for way more than 26.2 miles. The Joker's inside the house already. Final round, number two. Number two is worth two pressing points. Two pressing points. First part, what news organization put out its first writing style book in 1953? And for that second point, about 40% of the world's most visited websites use what open source system originally designed for blogs? Number two again, two pressing points. First part, what news organization put out its first writing style book in 1953? And for a second point, about 40% of the world's most visited websites use what open source system originally designed for blogs? Moving on, random knowledge number three. Number three is worth one point, and it's an anagram question. Number three, with a diet consisting mostly of roots, tubers, and its own poop. What but ugly African rodent anagrams to no deal market? With a diet consisting mostly of roots, tubers, and its own poop, what but ugly African rodent anagrams to no deal market? Final round, number four. Number four is worth three big points. Three points for each task or challenge from an outstanding reality competition Emmy winner. Just tell me the show. First, Detour. Second, Quick Fire. Third, Snatch Game. Snatch Game, I am still a juvenile. Number four, three points for each task or challenge from an outstanding reality competition. Emmy winner, you just name the show. First, Detour. Second, Quick Fire. Third, Snatch Game.
Random knowledge, final round, number five. It's worth one point. Using a single plant outside of Rome, what country plans to become the first to be powered entirely by solar energy? Using a single plant outside of Rome, what country plans to become the first to be powered entirely by solar energy? Final round, number six. Number six is another three-point question. Three points, Deutschland's extensive rivers is a handy mnemonic to remember what three rivers with the most mileage in Germany. Three points, Deutschland's extensive rivers is a handy mnemonic to remember what three rivers with the most mileage in Germany. And the pet ultimate question for tonight, final round number seven. Number seven, designed by Ralph Lauren, Team USA's official Olympics opening ceremony coats include an image of what sport that hasn't even been part of the game since 1936. Number seven, one more time, it's worth one point. Designed by Ralph Lauren. Team USA's official Olympics opening ceremony coats include an image of what sport that hasn't even been part of the games since 1936. And final question of the round, number eight. Number eight is worth four points. Four points. Name each dirty film. Name each dirty film. First, 1971, Clint Eastwood, a badge and a gun. Second point, 2016, Robert De Niro, Zac Efron, and drugs. Third, 1967. Lee Marvin and company versus Nazis. And fourth, 1987, Jennifer Grey, a watermelon, and the Mambo. Number eight, one more time, four points, just name each dirty film. First, 1971, Clint Eastwood, a badge and a gun. Second, 2016, Robert De Niro. Zac Efron and Drugs. Third, 1967, Lee Marvin and Company versus Nazis. And fourth, 1987, Jennifer Grey, A Watermelon, and The Mambo.
And that is the end of our final round of the evening. We have one more bonus question for you. As always, winner of the bonus gets a $5 credit for the Geeks of Drink Shopatorium and entered into a drawing at the end of the night for a big old Geeks of Drink swag box. Do exclamation point and your answer in the chat. Let's get to it. Our bonus question, NASA astronauts taped Velcro strips inside their helmets to do what to their otherwise inaccessible noses? NASA astronauts taped Velcro strips inside their helmets to do what to their otherwise inaccessible noses? I think you guys have that bonus all figured out. Why don't we go over some answers for the final round? Final round, random knowledge number one. The oil world's bubbling with the news that ConocoPhillips plans to acquire Marathon. Number two, two pressing points. What news organization put out its first writing style book in 53? That's the Associated Press. And about 40% of the world's most visited websites use WordPress. Number three, with a diet consisting mostly of roots, tubers, and its own poop, what butt ugly African rodent anagrams to no deal market? That's a naked mole rat. Number four, three point question. Name each reality show from the task or challenge detour. That's the amazing race. Quick fire. That's top chef. And the snatch game. That's RuPaul's drag race. Number five, using a single plant outside of Rome, what country plans to become the first to be powered entirely by solar energy? Well, it's the Vatican, Vatican City. Number six, three points, Deutschland's extensive rivers is a handy mnemonic to remember what three rivers with the most mileage in Germany they are. The Danube, the Elbe, maybe, let me look at that. Elba, the Danube, the Danau, and the Elba. And the Rhine. The Rhine. Number seven, designed by Ralph Lauren, Team USA's official Olympics opening ceremony. Coats include an image of polo that hasn't been part of the Olympics since 1936. And our final question of the quiz, number eight. Four points. You had to just name each dirty film. First, 71, Clint Eastwood, Badge and a Gun. Well, that's Dirty Harry. 2016, De Niro, Efron, and Drugs, that's Dirty Grandpa. 1967, Lee Marvin and Company versus Nazis, that's the Dirty Dozen. And 1987, Jennifer Grey, A Watermelon and the Mambo, well, that's Dirty Dancing. All right, it is time for our bonus answer. NASA astronauts tape Velcro strips inside their helmets to do what? to their otherwise inaccessible noses. Well, let's scratch them, scratch them, because you can't do that through the helmet. We thank you so much for coming out and playing Monday Night Twitch with us. We love hosting these shows. We love you guys as an audience, and the chat is always a good time. Don't forget, we're here every Monday night at 7 o'clock Eastern. Uh, no, 9 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Mountain. Is that right? Yeah, 7 o'clock Mountain, 9 o'clock Eastern. We're here every Monday night. Come back next week. Bring some friends. Until then, I am AJ. I've been your host, and this is Geeks Who Drink. And as always, we're awesome.